Hi, welcome to my latest video. This video is part two of a two-part video series looking at fitting amber strobes and rear work lights to the roof of my Freelander 2. In part one, I fitted the lamps to the roof rack. We've got four strobe lights and two rear work lights. And in this part two, I'm going to show you how I'm going to wire those down into the car to switches on the interior light panel. Let's just have a quick climb up to the roof and just recap on where I've got to. So in the last video, in part one, I fitted four amber strobes. Okay, so these are really decent, solid metal construction, um, rugged and very bright amber strobe units. Okay, they were bought on eBay from a seller called Brighter Lights. They have the ability to synchronize up with each other and they also have about 30 different flashing modes that you can sort of switch through. So I fitted two on the front there with stainless bolts, junction box underneath there screwed in. I've replaced the original two screws that I put in with some black screws. Originally I put uh, stainless ones in there and it just looked a bit odd so I put black with a black M10 machine screws through there. Now they're, they're actually black stainless steel so they won't rust and I've used these connectors these are waterproof ip68 rated connectors okay so i've got one of those on each of the lights so six in total so four strobes plus the two rear work lights each light has got a connector on it allowing it to be easily disconnected and swapped out or or um the, the mode change or anything like that okay so everything's been wired in neatly with wiring cradles and then on the other side, there is a wire that goes all the way round and across to this junction box, okay? So originally the junction box was gonna go at the back there, but then I realized that from behind the car, there would be lots of wires, cabling kind of visible uh, in between these bars, okay? So I didn't want that. So I've put it down there, um, but luckily it just fits nice and tight between those bars. What I was really, really keen to do as well as um, wanting to wire everything in nice and neatly and properly, I have tried to keep this area inside, the interior of the roof rack, completely empty. Okay, so I didn't want sort of junction boxes just kind of bolted in here or sticking up. I wanted everything flush uh, so that spare wheels and, and all the cargo, whatever I'm putting on the roof, can go in there without rubbing through any cables or disturbing uh, any of the kind of wiring that I've, that I've done. So these three connectors here and these three connectors here are the ones that, that feed this, this junction box here. So we've got um, a connector on, we've got a connector on that strobe, a connector on that one, the same on the other side, plus the wire from the front has got a connector on it. Um, and that goes into there. I've 3D printed a wiring cradle. Let me just get the other one that I've just printed. Okay, so I've designed that. Here's a quick look at the 3D design. And that will go in, uh, let's get this right. So that kind of goes in like that um, and sort of clips in. And then the, there are three kind of uh, cradles there for, for the, the connectors just to sort of hold everything nice and neatly down kind of out of the way. The junction box in the middle has been carefully screwed with some small short stainless black stainless screws just into those uh, bars just into the top of the bars just to kind of hold the lid shut. I've sealed around the the lid with sealant and there's a very very small drain hole on the bottom just in case water does enter if um, jet washing the car or something like that okay so that is the roof rack done i mentioned earlier about the sort of synchronization wire so there is a uh, there's actually four wires on the lamps plus a zero sync 
and the mode change wire. Okay, so originally I connected all the sync wires together. Now what happened then is all four of the lights flashed, then went off, then flashed, then went off. So there was a time where no lights were lit and then all four were lit. And it didn't really sort of look very good actually. It, it just, uh, it, the, 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 the thing that I found is when I turned the lights on, even without the sync wires, because they all started at the same time, they were synchronized naturally because they all started together. Okay, now there was a bit of drift, some lights flashed slightly quicker than others, and after about a minute, they were sort of all flashing independently um, in, in their own time, and uh, that actually looked better. It, it looked better, it sort of added a bit of randomness. Uh, it meant that at any one moment, there was usually at least one light lit and I think just sort of visibility at the side of the road, it actually looked better like that. So what I've done instead is, instead of connecting all of the sync wires together, I've connected the yellow wire in each, each of the connectors um, from each of the strobes. Uh, so they're all connected together and the yellow wire is the mode change wire. Now I've set the mode, here's a quick video of the, the mode that I've ended up with. It's a sort of multiple flash and then a short delay and then multiple flash. So what it means now is that I could, if I wanted to, have a sort of a button somewhere, probably not in the car, it's a bit, bit unnecessary really having a mode change button in the car, but I could always put the button maybe possibly in the bottom of the junction box or, or somewhere, or, or even just if I wanted to change the mode, I just ground that yellow wire on one lamp and because they're all connected together, all of them will change their mode at the same time. So that's a possibility, but the synchronization wires will be left disconnected. For now, I've picked the mode, I've set the mode on each light uh, separately and they're all they're all flashing with the same pattern uh, which is the one that I want to use so this connector here is the one that goes down to the interior of the car okay so that's the one that feeds everything I didn't take a connector up here okay so in the first video I did a little whiteboard circuit diagram and I explained why I didn't want to do that, okay? Um, so I've taken the wire down here and it comes around there. I've made a small hole there and then I've run the wire along. This is just a sort of um, three core flexible cable. It's actually a pond cable. It's, it's a very nice flexible rubber coated, very waterproof three core mains cable but it's rated six amps each of these the, uh, the, the amber strobes pull about two to three amps when they're running and the work lights are about two amps when they're both lit so well within the current rating and uh, that comes down here i had to sort of cut out here there was a sort of rubber flap in here which i just could not get the cable i tried pushing the cable in at one end going along it just wouldn't go so I cut that out and I've run that all the way down here. It's just about fitted underneath that rubber flap there. That bulges out in a couple of places. So I'll probably put a bit of, bit of insulation tape or something over that just to kind of make sure it's definitely not gonna uh, come out of that groove. So that comes down, then behind here, Okay, so originally I was going to take it through that hole there, but th there just wasn't enough room. It was lifting this um, scuttle panel up too much. So I've taken that over there because water comes out of here. Okay, so any water that goes in there, there is a drain hole, but it can also sort of find its way out here and comes down there. So I wanted to get that up out of the way. I'll put some more um, sticky wiring cradles on here, but just for now it goes in through a hole there, which is a nice convenient uh, sized opening, and the wire then goes there. Now, now for the exciting bit, I have 
drilled through the bulkhead okay done a separate video on that okay so I did that yesterday and I uploaded that last night as a separate video mainly because I get asked all the time it's probably the number one question well it's, it's actually the number one question is what tires are you running the number two question is how do you wire through the bulkhead for spotlights and strobes okay so I'll do a video on tires another time um, but this is where I've taken these cables through. Now there's actually two here. This one is spare, okay? So that one's gonna be used for enabling my um, roof light bar, okay? So I was bringing three wires sort of bodged around the kind of door jam and then up in there was a uh, amber strobe feed and then a, a sort of to and from on the, uh, the, the, the the trigger for the light bar relay okay um so so that could then be turned off with a with a switch up inside the car if required okay so um that's that's not actually needed for legal reasons the lighting regulations clearly state that the the light bar or any other spotlights do need to turn off when you dip your lights, okay? But there is no requirement for a sort of an enabler switch, okay? The only reason I'm having that one is really if there's, if, if, if I'm out in the snow um, or, or it's a bit misty, then the light bar can just, um, it, there's just too much glare back from from sort of like, like snow and mist coming at the screen, okay? So there are times where I just want to run on the, the, the lights at the front of the car uh, for main beam and not not have that roof light on uh, very rare though very rare but at least I've got a switch to turn it off it also helps if if you do get an MOT tester who makes it up as he goes along or or a policeman at the side of the road who stops you and goes oh I've got a separate switch for your light bar uh, not actually required but having a switch would just avoid any awkward conversations okay so light bar wiring is a different thing i'm going to be talking in this video about the roof rack okay so that wire that i've brought down from the roof rack goes across there and then goes through that that lower grommet there it's a little bit bright at the moment. hopefully you can see that um those go through and come out behind the glove box uh, i suggest you watch the video on the wiring because it was not easy at all finding a way through because there's a lot of stuff in here there's ecus and junction boxes and heater ducts and also the explosive charges for the airbag so you have to be really careful where you drill through but i've got these wires coming through now and i'm going to take both of those across up out of here and then if i just get into the car Oh. oh right and then up here up here now i have to stay well away from this thing okay so this is the airbag curtain okay so not an airbag like this airbag here which kind of explodes uh, into your face um this one um, presumably it's sort of unravels or something I, I i don't wish to find out really how it works um but it kind of protects you um on the side window okay so i'm guessing it protects you against uh, glass coming in or um or, or debris or, or or just an impact against the window or whatever so um so that's the side curtain explosive uh thing somewhere in there there is a kind of like a detonator thing that kind of fires that so stay well away from that and also make sure that any wires are very carefully cable tied in uh, so they don't get in the way of that should it ever need to deploy this wire here is for my dash cam okay so i've got dash cam there and that um that's a bit bright with the sun hopefully you can see that so we've got a next base dash cam that just wires up across here and down there this wiring loom here is the the factory um, loom that feeds presumably the back of the car um i can't think what else it's or maybe interior light things like that um anything else sort of up in the roof and towards the back of the car that it that it needs to um 
needs to send power to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get those wires up to the interior light panel. Okay, so this panel here, what I'm going to be doing here is wiring up another switch. Okay, so I have somewhere, somewhere, I don't know where, I've lost it now already. Um, I've got a green switch, so a bit like this sort of orange and blue one, I've got a green one which I'm going to put in the middle of that rectangle there. So I'm just going to drill through here uh, and fit that. And yeah, uh, th then then connect up the, 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 the pond cable and uh, um, that that will be will be it really. Um, then then I'll have the strobe wire. Uh, so this this blue now what have we got here? We've got that's positive feed. Um, and then there's a ground f because these are illuminated switches. Okay, it's very important to use illuminated switches. Uh, I need a ground wire onto there, and then the middle one is the switched active um, uh, pin on the switch. Okay, so that will go off to to the amber strobes, and then the same on the green one will go to the um, to, to the work lights. Okay, so we've got a bit of a mess of piggyback connectors here. It's not pretty at all, so I'll try and do something about that as well. Neaten that up, really. Um, ideally, I need like a sort of grounding block or something like that in here. I'll see what I can do. So I'm going to actually take this panel completely off so that I can drill it. It's a 20 millimeter drill for these switches, and um, yeah, I'll just sort of get get the hole drilled in in here, and then get that switch put in, and then reassemble. Okay, so I've drilled. A 20 millimeter hole here and I've put in the green switch okay so that looks pretty good I think with the three different colors of illuminated switches what I'm going to do here rather than using a load of spade terminals all kind of piggybacked up is I'm just gonna solder across here all of those um, sort of like brass colored um, pins that you can see on the switches that's the the ground connection to enable the, the little LED to come on inside. That's why it's a different colour to the other two. So I will just strip back this insulation here and here and just solder that on so we've got one earth wire there. Otherwise we're going to end up with sort of three or four spade terminals all piggybacked up which is just going to it's just going to look messy. So um so right so let me do that and that is, let's see what we've got here, what colour is that? That's amber. So that's the positive. So that needs to actually go onto that one as well um, for the work light. So again, I might uh, I might actually sort of solder that one across there. Um, the, the, the blue light is different. Okay, so that has a sort of an in and an out um, for the, um, uh, the, the relay uh, energizing signal for the, uh, the light bar relay. Okay, so this panel, before I put it back in, there's a couple of things I want to do. So, first of all, I just want to tell you a little bit about removing this panel, and then I'm just going to quickly summarise the electrical connections that we've got here. And then I want to show you something else that I may do before putting this back in. Okay, so I've run these wires, these two cables here. This is the, the original factory loom which has connectors on it for the, um, uh, or the microphone. So this is the microphone for the hands-free. And also this little uh, thing here which is the airbag, uh, passenger airbag warning light. Okay, so that's on uh, one of the, this little black plug here. That white one there is for the for the microphone, and then we've got uh, uh, three spade connectors here. I think uh, from the factory these are sort of combined into sort of like a double black uh, sort of connector with 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 sort of two two spade connectors sort of built in, uh, and then this one's like a single one. So just to summarise what these connections are, this one here on its own is positive here okay so that is 12 volts here and then 
the two over at this end, if I actually pop this out, it might be a bit easier to, to explain this. So to remove this panel from the headlining and the car, there is a bit of a knack to it and it does require a bit of brute force. The first thing I recommend doing is removing this, okay, so that's just the clear light cover. That is very easy to remove. Just use a, a, a little sort of uh, plastic kind of trim tool to prise that out and these, these sort of legs here just unclip and that comes off. That's what you need to do if you're changing the bulbs. If you want to go further and actually remove the panel, then the best thing to do is to remove this bulb holder unit first, okay? So that just has a little metal clip here, okay? So you just, um, from the other side, just put in something into that gap there and this this little gap here and press that that clip and that just comes out okay once that is out then you can sort of reach in and and really start giving this a bit of a tug okay and it's there are three places here where it uses these kind of like plastic clips okay plastic pegs okay and those go into these holes up here hopefully you can see that there's a hole here and one there and one there and they are quite difficult to remove you've just got to pull it down to just pull those out and that does require a bit of force as well as disengaging those three pegs there are six barbs okay six barbed clips around the perimeter of the panel okay so two at the front two at the side and then two at the back which are sort of almost a different angle to the others they all need to be disconnected um, so you're going to have to sort of put something in and kind of prize push those or something to kind of disengage them somehow and they locate onto this this metal ring okay so you want to try and do all of that without bending this uh, aluminium sort of rim around here okay so that that is quite quite soft and is, is bent quite easily so you want to try and uh, keep that straight push uh, some sort of trim tool in to disengage all of those barbs and then eventually the panel will come out this spike here doesn't hold it in place that that is a just a locating spike so, you, so when you put it back in you you, you, you kind of lines up and gets in the right position okay so that's how you remove it if i just now quickly talk a bit about the um the electrical connections here Okay, so that goes that way round. We can see this one's positive. That goes to the body of those bulbs across here to this end of this one here, the main interior light, across there and then onto the body of the other bulb. And that's it. This connection here is a ground connection. Okay, so as far as I know, it is just an ordinary zero volts ground connection. It's not active it's not controlled and that just goes to each map light switch okay um, and then follows these copper colored connections here and here to the tips of the two map light bulbs okay so when this positive is 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 active then switching these two switches will light either map light bulb okay that's all that that ground connection there is used for this other pin here which is at sort of right angles to the the ground connection is an active ground okay so that one goes through the main interior light switch here and is connected via this copper wire here this copper sort of track to the other end of the main interior light so what happens when you open the door is that this is taken low by the the sort of the computer okay so the the, the ECU or whatever's controlling it um, sort of takes that low and it, it does it in a sort of uh, like almost like a gradual um, gradual sort of uh, 
switch. It doesn't just go on off. It um, just starts to pull current. The light, we've all noticed that our interior lights sort of come on gradually and then go off gradually and that is all controlled by this active low here. There's obviously some kind of um, variable voltage control or pulse width modulated control that is done by the uh, by by the computer of the car. Okay, this 12 volts here isn't a permanent 12 volts. Okay, it's not ignition controlled. It's not sort of turned on and off by the doors opening, and it's not left on all the time. This 12 volts here actually goes off about 20 minutes to half an hour after you lock the car. Okay, so, so that is by design so that if you leave the interior light on, it won't flatten your battery overnight. Okay, so this here could be used to drive the, the dash cam that I've got here actually. Uh, so this is a next base dash cam which is currently wired in all the way down to the fuse uh, in the fuse box. I forget the number of the fuse. I will put it up at the bottom of the screen now. Um, and that dash cam is using a hard wire kit okay so that allows you to connect the the usual 5 volt USB connection to a 12 volts ignition controlled 12 volts okay so when I start the car the dash cam comes on uh, and then when I stop the engine uh, turn the ignition off it goes off okay so if I was to connect to this one instead then the dash cam would stay on a bit longer 20 minutes half an hour which is great for supermarket car parks where you park up you walk away um, and your dash cam's then off uh, so so anything could happen in that time so wouldn't it be great if the dash cam stayed on a bit longer but didn't stay on all night long and flatten your battery in the process now i know a lot of dash cams will st stop recording when the voltage reaches a certain amount like 11 and a half volts or something like that but th even that might be um might 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 take the battery a little bit too low okay so i have seen a video that powerful uk have done recently where they connected their dash cam into this 12 volts that's an absolutely brilliant idea i'm going to try and do the same with mine not in this video in another video soon i will try to rejig the hard wiring kit so that it uses this sort of semi-active 12 volts here okay so that's it. That's it uh, on the, the connections of the interior lights here. Okay, so fairly easy to remove this piece, a lot more difficult to remove the main panel. So because it is quite difficult to remove this panel, I can't help thinking that it would make sense to do everything I need to do on this panel before I put it back up into the ceiling of the car. Okay, I've already put my green switch in there. I had the blue switch and the amber switch in already, but I was thinking the other day, could I do something else with this? Could I possibly put something into the spare microphone hole here? Okay, so, so these little sort of vents here, they're not vents, they are... Um, like uh, speaker grills effectively or microphone grills the um that that is the microphone there and this one is where it would go on a left-hand drive car okay and the reason for that is it's a sort of directional microphone it actually says on there you can just about let me just see if i can zoom that in a bit it it actually says i don't know if that's there can you see that it says to speaker Okay, so not, not loudspeaker, that's to the person speaking, okay? So that microphone actually, and it's not going to be able to see it really, but there are, let's see if I can remove this, there are sort of two, like, sort of holes on it, okay? So one is um, to, to, to hear the person speaking, and the other is to cancel out the background noise, okay? So that's why it's directional. Um, so if it's located here, this little peg here goes there okay so that it's pointing then that way to the person talking in in in, in, in the other seat okay for a left-hand drive car so could i possibly use this i could cut that out and put something in there okay like i don't know a voltmeter 
or a USB socket or something useful. It seems a shame to waste that sort of uh, blank space. Now, which one is it? Let's see. So that goes, yeah, so that goes that way round. Um, and then that one there is unused, okay, on the passenger side, UK passenger side. So what could I put in there? So I've bought myself a selection of little sort of thingies here. These, this, this is like a little LED 12 volt, you know, sort of volt me digital display voltmeter. Okay, so that that thread there um, actually is is almost the same size as that sort of grill there. So I wouldn't have to remove these clips. I just need to sort of cut out that grill, and then we could have a voltmeter there. I've bought another voltmeter. This one is uh, quite a fancy one actually. It's got a sort of coloured LED bar around the outside as well as the the digits in the middle okay and it's even got a sort of overvolt indicator as well i will put up a picture now of the um like the ebay listing picture that shows uh, what this actually looks like it's 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 very nice although there is a possibility that it might be a bit bright because it's got so many leds on it at night that could be a bit distracting and uh, could even lead to me sort of driving along and not not realizing I've got some of these switches kind of illuminated um, because I'm so used to the sort of the glare of the, the the voltmeter okay so whatever I fit needs to be not not too bright um, I could fit uh, some USB sockets okay so exactly the same thread this one's a bit deeper um, but these are all the sort of standard uh, I, I think they, they design these to go in like a, a panel so sort of three or four of them in a panel uh, for car or boat use um, this is quite nice it's got this sort of rubber protective uh, cap on it there and two usb sockets that's great although i don't know do i really need more usb sockets do i do i do i want usb sockets in the in the headlining of the car with with wires hanging down i've i've got a sort of a piggybacky thing here and i've currently got a a little voltmeter thing there which you can just see glowing in the other permanently live socket um, but certainly I don't really want to be driving along with with cables hanging down for sort of charging phones or uh, running dash cams or anything like that so the USB sockets and there is another one that I've bought let's have a look is it this one so this one here is very very similar uh, no it's not that one it's this one here Let's have a look. So this one has uh, a voltmeter. No, it is the other one. So there's this one here that's double USB, and then this one uh, is double USB with with a voltmeter in the middle. Okay, uh, with an LED display of voltage in the middle. So I don't need two readouts. Um, so. I, I could probably put the USB ones in the boot instead and um, and then have have a voltmeter in here so um, now I don't really need USBs in the ceiling so now what I could do of course is to fit one here and then relocate this microphone maybe to there with two little holes drilled just just to, for the for the uh, hearing the sound and and put another one in there I, I mean maybe I'm getting a bit carried away now but we we could have something there and then the microphone or or well which way around is it? it's the other way around so the microphone there and then uh, something there it might look a little bit odd with just one so maybe I put in this on one side and then um, the USB sockets uh, without the LED display on the other side now this uh, one actually has a, like an illuminated ring here's a photo of what it looked like on the listing um, so again that could be a bit bright could be a bit distracting while driving so I need to think very carefully about do I put something in one or both of these um, and if so, what do I do I fit now? Any that I don't fit, I can put into the in the boot of the car in in the in the boot side wall next to the uh, the 12 volt socket. So um, what I'm going to do now is just power up each of those 
each of those um, things that I bought and just we'll, we'll actually connect 12 volts to them and just see how bright they are, see what they look like and that'll help me decide which one I use um, or, or even two of them maybe, maybe. So, uh, so we'll see what they look like and then I need to chop out one of these grills if I am to go ahead and fit one into this, this panel. Okay, so I've just got some crock clip leads here and what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to power up this one. So let's just connect up. Okay, so that's quite nice. I've got a, a fairly dim red LED display there, that's not too bright. Almost need to do this in the dark really just to kind of see what that's going to look like in inside a dark car. But that's that's not too bad and it's not too distracting. And being red as well, it's um a different colour to the, the switches, okay, so I can sort of um not get confused with uh, this uh and accidentally leave one of the switches sort of illuminated. Okay, let's carefully check the next one. So the next one is the one with the LED bars around it. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. Okay, so that's got a blue LED display. I'm not sure what this... this uh, I thought that, that single red LED was uh, like an overvolt indicator but it seems to be on for 11.8 maybe it's um maybe it's under volt as well okay so this is showing up for red there so my battery is uh, in need of a bit of a charge i haven't driven my car all week and last weekend i was messing about with work lights and amber lights setting flash modes and things like that so looks like the voltage is getting a bit low so that that's nice though that's nice um not too bright, not too uh, not too distracting. I think I could actually live with that being in the uh, the headlining of the car, uh, sort of up above in in the interior light panel. The LED bar, uh, as far as I know, goes sort of red, then yellow, then green. Okay, so um, so if I was to start the car now, we 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 would see that sort of jump round into the green, hopefully. So I'll consider that one. That That is my favourite at the moment. Okay. So I've now got the USB ones, which I'm hesitant about fitting because I just don't think I need USB sockets overhead. But just so we can see what they look like. Let's carefully connect those. Okay, so that's got a little red... LED display as well. It's showing 11.5 volts now, so a bit of a difference in the calibration between these. Um, that one is okay, but I think that would actually be better fitted in the boot. Okay, so that's um, not really uh, necessary, I think, for fitting in the in the overhead light panel. Right, let's uh, try the last one. And then the other USB socket now, this one doesn't have voltmeter built in. This is just two USB sockets, but I think it has an illumination. Oh, that's quite nice. That's, yeah, interesting. I don't know what colour that's meant to be, whether that's red. It's got like a, what appears to be an orange LED inside it. Um, but that's quite nice, and the good thing about that is when the cover is closed, you don't see the light. So that's quite nice. If I was to put this in the, in the interior light panel, then it wouldn't be a distraction or anything. It just might be useful for plugging in a, a phone or something whilst parked up. I, I don't really want cables dangling whilst driving. But um, if I was to fit a second one of these devices, it would be this one. Okay, so so that's then 
sort of in darkness but then when you want to plug something in it, it will light up and show you where where to plug your plug okay which is it's nice uh, that's a nice nice one that actually so so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this one and this one and I'm going to relocate the microphone just forwards very very slightly so that it still works and still points at me uh, and can still sort of um, work hands free uh, but then we've got these two devices fitted I think they're yeah they're, they're, they're the same diameter the same thread so um, the same hole will be required to fit them there's a lot of space above the interior light panel so the depth of this isn't an issue that's obviously got some sort of voltage um, sort of step down thing circuitry inside it to to give the 5 volts USB from the 12 volts connected at the back so that's what I'm going to do and then the other two um, well what probably one of them this one I just don't think I'm going to use actually because that, that's a, that looks quite different to the others it's got a sort of glossy domed kind of uh, fascia on it and uh, uh, these these are all kind of like like a, a, a concave matte appearance uh, that, that's a sort of convex shiny um, that sort of front panel which I, I probably won't use that one okay so this one here with the built-in combined meter and USBs that's perfect for putting in the boot and I've bought myself a 30 millimeter hole saw here and I've drilled the 30 millimeter holes these little devices have a, a I think it's a one and an eighth inch a thread which, which works out at about 29 millimeters okay 28 and a half I think it is so I thought I'd go for a 30 millimeter uh, hole and, and that way there's, there's just a little bit of uh, wiggle room on it so it was a little bit tricky drilling these holes because there was no plastic in the middle for the for the little pilot drill to go into um, but by sort of holding this firmly down and then using a piece of wood underneath um, it stopped the drill from sort of scooting around so I've managed to drill those out I'm hoping I can get away without removing this sort of ring around here with these clips okay so at first I thought I'll, I'll just cut those out but it's, it's very difficult to get in I can't get in there with a multi-tool there's just not enough room this obscures any kind of side access in with with cutters and that if I start hacking away at that there's a risk that it could actually crack the main fascia of that um, of that panel so I'm going to try and leave those in and then just sort of tighten uh, fairly firmly down onto that but but it really doesn't need to be tight at all this is only plastic thread on this so what I'll do now is have a go at actually fitting those in so let's see that goes that way round in the car so the one nearest me I want to be the voltmeter and then the passenger side one, I want to be the USB sockets. Okay, so that if a phone or something does get plugged in there, it's sort of out of my kind of field of vision. Right, okay, let's get those screwed in and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, the panel is in, so it's all there, it's all connected up, I've connected up my main beam wires as well, and they're connected up to the relay in the engine bay, 
everything is secured with some cable ties and a wiring cradle here the microphone is in and that's reconnected the airbag warning light is connected so now for a bit of testing before I push this back up in to the uh, to the headlining so let's have a little look and see what we've got here so first things first our voltmeter is working okay 11.5 a bit low um, but uh, I'll start the car in a moment we'll see if that goes up uh, map light one okay so that works two that works and the interior light is also working so if I uh, I don't know if that will go off when I close the door but the, the LED is working okay so um, uh, if I now put this one on okay we should see the strobes yeah strobes light lit and then green one let's see if the work lights are lit yeah they're lit it's a bit difficult to see them in the daylight but uh, they are definitely on and then what I'll do if I start the if I film this while I turn the ignition on we should see that airbag warning light so let's just I've got the Put the key in. Okay, there's the airbag warning light. And this blue one here, if I flash the headlights, yeah, that lights as well. Okay, and the light bar, I saw the, uh, the glint off the bonnet of the light bar coming on. Okay. So... I think everything's working. The only thing I haven't tested is this USB. Um, oh, that's lit up. That's nice. So let's see if we can plug something in. So if I put my uh, phone into the phone, I've got like a cradle thing here. Uh, put the phone in there, and then if this is powered up, the phone should start to charge. Oh, there we go. Okay. And, yeah, and the phone is charging. Okay, so that socket's live. Let's just try the other one. Yeah. Okay. And that's also charging. Right, everything's working. Everything is working, so I need to push this back up carefully into the headlining. Uh, oh, I could also do with testing the microphone as well. Um, you have to make a phone call to do that, but uh, yeah, I mean, it is connected up. It's there, it can see the sound through the holes. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to leave that one. Actually, I will. I will try that very soon on a on a phone call. But I'm not going to do that now while filming. So right, let's push this all back up in. I need both hands for that, and uh, and then I'll start the engine and we'll see what the voltmeter reads. Okay, right, it's back in there it's clipped back in those pegs have located the front is okay the back is just hanging a little low actually and even though those barbed clips at the back have gone over the metal aluminium ring i just think that the ring itself has been pulled down a bit um so that's not sitting quite right so i think what i might have to do at some point is either just carefully pop the back out and sort of push the aluminium ring up a bit so that that is held a bit further up um, I might be able to remove this and reach in but it's more likely to have to be done from the back uh, but it's in there it's it's secure um, and everything's kind of working now I realized I did something wrong with the USB here 
So I've put that that way round so that it you know flips away and you can then plug in without it kind of being in the way. But the writing there is the wrong way round. Um, doesn't really matter, it's a minor thing, but this uh, sort of flappy rubber cap could probably have been fitted this way round with the sockets the other way round. It, it doesn't really matter because it's kind of hidden from view when that's closed. But um, yeah, it's just something I've just noticed. It's, um, if I do pull the back down to deal with the clips, then I might better just reach in and sort of uh, loosen that and allow that to rotate. But for now, this is in. I'm going to start the engine now. Let's just start the engine and see what happens to our voltage. Oh, that, there we go. We've got a, oh, 13.3. Okay, 14.2. There we go, full green bars there. That's that's looking nice. 14.1, I'll rev that a bit. Yeah, 14.4. Yeah, that's good. I haven't driven the car properly for over a week, so I need to give it a bit of a run put some charge back in the battery, that's why it's sitting at sort of 11 and a half volts. Um, okay, right, that's good. And now later on tonight in the dark, I will come out here and just see how bright that looks in the dark. Okay, so here we are a couple of hours later and I thought I'd just see what this looks like in the dark. Okay, so We've obviously got the, the blue interior light here. There's the gauge, the USB socket's also lit there. So I'm just going to start the engine. If I, I don't know, if I close the door and what I want to do is I want to see how with the headlights on how bright that is and that's actually not so bad the the USB socket will be will be hidden okay because the cover will be closed now that gauge looks a little bit bright on this video here but uh, compared to the, the headlights out the front that's not so bad actually I, it's uh, not too distracting at all so just to operate the um, the switches here, just so you can see what they look like. We've got uh, the strobes. Okay. So that's quite bright and obvious when that's on. And then the green light is very, very bright actually. And that's put the work lights on at the back. So there's no driving along with that on accidentally. And then the blue one there which I'm not going to actually operate um, because my light bar is going to then shine straight into my neighbour's conservatory. Um, that that I, I know is, is, is quite bright already okay so I've, I've been using that one for a few years. If I turn off the engine then yeah that's a little bit more visible now um, and the interior light comes on Okay, so everything's looking good. What I've also done is in the fuse box, I've moved my dash cam from fuse five to fuse 17. Okay, and fuse 17 is the fuse that runs this panel. And I increased the fuse from 7.5 amps to 10 amps. And uh, that, that just gives enough current to run work lights and strobes and all of these things all at the same time if necessary. So what that means is that the dash cam will stay on a bit longer. Okay, because the 12 volts to this panel goes off after about half an hour. It's about half an hour after you lock the car the um the dash cam should go off okay so so the interior light has now faded out not completely it's still on dim um the dash cam's still on so what i'm going to do i'm just going to get out of the car 
and I will close the car and lock it. The interior light should fade out, but you can see there the voltmeter and the dash cam are still on, even though the car is locked. Okay, so what I will do is come back in about half an hour and check that both of those have gone off. So here we are about half an hour later and it's a bit difficult to see. I'm just going to turn my head torch off. You can see there inside the car the dash cam is off and the voltmeter is also off. If I unlock the car you see the voltmeter has actually come on with the interior light and the dash cam is also powering up. This is before I've put the key in the ignition which is quite nice. Okay so it's up and running before I even start the engine and, and move away. There's the voltmeter there and uh, let's see if this yeah, the USBs are lit up as well. That's good. Okay. Right, well. I hope that video was useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.